Hi everyone, this is Sean Ismail from the Cloud Ranger and you are viewing the Microsoft Azure training. Today is the part seven of the Azure Virtual Networks session and we are going to talk about VNet to VNet connectivity or the Azure Virtual Network to Virtual Network connectivity. So this is a very important session for you because um, not only for the exam, this is something most likely you are going to do your production right away if you are going to consider doing a pilot project or doing something even in production uh, in Azure for virtual networks and connectivity and things as such. Vnet to Vnet connectivity, this is, this is a session I'm trying to sort of uh, fit in to, um, to replace or to sort of substitute a site-to-site -site connectivity um, that we have discussed about earlier. So the reason behind doing this is a lot of you who are practicing this in a home lab scenario might not have the right VPN device or an edge device with the correct set of requirements to set up a tunnel with the Azure's virtual network gateway. So having said that, Vnet to Vnet, which is actually a virtual network to another Azure's virtual network, simulates the same scenario. And this is something you can pretty much sit at home and do right away. And if you're actually doing this at work and you do have an edge device or a VPN device, you can obviously uh, fire that up and make a site-to-site -site tunnel with the, with the Azure virtual network. So let's get into a little bit of details about this. So these are the three topologies I could think of when it comes to a site-to-site -site connectivity. So the first one is where you have two on-premises network. And chances are this is something, if you are not in the cloud at all, you may still be used to this because you may have a branch office or you may have two head offices or two data centers who are connected with each other. And the way that happens is that you basically have two gateways or two VPN devices or edge devices or even routers or firewalls, anything that's capable of uh, bringing up a VPN tunnel, um, IPsec uh, tunnel, um, and it's possible to make this site-to-site -site connectivity. So you could have virtual machines on this side of uh, this enterprise and they would communicate with the virtual machines here through this tunnel. And all you need is these two gateways who are capable of bringing up that tunnel. So this is one scenario you may be used to. The second one is the most likely scenario most organizations have when they are trying to, um, the whole moniker of talking about um, extending the data center to the cloud is exactly what the second one is. So chances are you have all your serv servers and everything on premises, or this on-premises will be the data center where all your uh, servers are residing today. Let them be physical or virtual, it doesn't matter, but this is your on-premises network. This is what you have. Now, extending your network to the cloud would be something similar like this. So you have your cloud, Microsoft Azure here, and it has the virtual machines that you created over here. So for all you do is basically create a virtual network and create a gateway for that virtual network. And you'd have your on-premises gateway communicate with this gateway of the virtual network. And you'll bring up the tunnel for the VPN. So that way, these virtual machines would communicate which, with each other based on what VPN actually does. So they would be, uh, they'd be local to each other. They'll be accessing each other locally, even though they're actually, they're actually going over the internet and this tunnel is established over the internet, but it will be a virtual private network and VPN. So it's a virtual uh, private tunnel that you'll be passing the traffic from. And knowing VPN, you probably know about this already. So this is second one is going to be the most likely scenario that you will just extend your network. Now, the third one, which is what we are going to do today is actually a site to site in one sense. But what we are doing is we are establishing this site to site connectivity all in the cloud. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a virtual network and we're going to create a gateway for this. 
and we are going to create another virtual network and going to create a network for this and have this two communicate with each other as if uh, they're two separate sites. So this could, for example, simulate your um, cloud and this could be simulating your own premises. And the only reason behind actually doing this is uh, to practice a site to site or to establish a site to site, you'd be doing the same configurations. So you can almost assume that this part is the cloud and this part is on your own premise and you, you could, you would be doing the same configurations. So uh, this is a good practice. And uh, doing that, you don't have to go now and start uh, looking for a router to buy or uh, borrow or whatever to uh, simulate a or I mean not simulate to actually perform a site-to-site -site connectivity hands-on practice so that's the scenario we'll do and I'll get into more details of why this scenario actually works uh, as a site-to-site -site. so let's get into a little bit more details about the VNet to VNet connectivity in particular so in VNet to VNet connectivity, we are basically connecting two virtual networks in Azure. So you have two, one virtual network, another virtual network, you create respective gateways and make a site-to-site -site connection between them. Obviously, it requires the gateway. So like in our previous session, we talked about when we were doing the point-to-site, the only way you will ever create a tunnel, doesn't matter what kind of tunnel you're creating, is actually by uh, provisioning a gateway on your virtual network. And for VNet to VNet connectivity, we need the dynamic routing enabled on the gateway. So we'll be demonstrating, going through that when we'll be going through the demonstration. Now, the next one is the address space. And I want to absolutely assure you that this will probably be uh, the most important task in your uh, production environment. Everything else will almost come as a second nature because it's very easy to do five, six steps and get a site to site tunnel up. But the biggest, the bigger planning part will be for the address space. So if you're already familiar with VPN concepts, uh, you already know this, but if you're not, the whole idea is that you are having your internal subnet or your internal private network space uh, accessible to another site uh, uh, through that uh, tunnel as if these two sites were one single site overlapping each other. So if you are in site A, the private network of site A will be available to the uh, site B. So site B people or the users will access site A resources as if they're on the same network. That's the whole essence of having a virtual private network that you are allowing something like that, ideally, which you would not allow on a public network. Like you would, you don't want people from the internet to access your internal servers or resources, right? So what happens is that if you have these two sites and they have an address space, for example, on site A, something like 192.168.00 with a, uh, 16, base, 16 bit subnet mask, you cannot have the other side on a 192.168 and 16 bit subnet mask as well. The reason behind that is when the tunnel is established, your users, if they want to connect to a server called 192.168.11, they wouldn't know that if this is going to be on the site A or site B, because both of them have the same address space both of them could have this uh, same address because of the address space being same. So the plan is that if you are going to be on premises with, for example, 192.168.00 with a 16-bit subnet mask, you want to ensure that uh, your virtual machines or the VNet address space is not the same. You do not want them to overlap. You want them to be separate. So uh, the machines on each side uh, can access resources on the other side once the tunnel has been up without any conflict. So that's the planning part of this. So in a VNet to VNet scenario, when we talk about that, hey, we are making these two virtual networks talk by a site to site tunnel, we are going to use one subscription to do this, right? So this is just because for ease of demonstrating this, or it's because you just probably have one subscription, trial subscription you've signed on to. But do remember that VNet to a Azure VNet is absolutely as real as it can get like a site to site. 
The reason behind this is that these two VNets do not have to be on the same subscription. These virtual networks can be on separate subscriptions, it can be separate accounts, it can be separate organizations, right? So if you have a partner organization where you want to do a site to site, we have done this on premises for years where a partner a company would want to create a tunnel with us so they can access certain resources. So a VNet on one Azure subscription and one account for one organization can connect to another VNet in another subscription, another account, and another organization, and they do not even, they, I mean, they can be arm's length. They do not have to even know each other anyway. As far as the site-to-site -site tunnel is concerned, you are only going to share certain information. Like for a regular tunnel, what would you share? You would share the gateway IP address, which is the public IP address, and you would be sharing like a shared passphrase for uh, creating your IPsec tunnels. And that's all you really need. So these two virtual networks can be completely separate from each other. But to simulate this and to keep things, easy, keep things easy, what we are going to do is we are going to use the same subscription to do that. Because if you remember our virtual network concepts from a few sessions ago, two virtual networks do not talk to each other. They have completely two separate. They are in complete isolation. They are not supposed to so a virtual machine in your subscription in one VNet will not talk to another virtual machine in the same subscription in another virtual net or VNet. So this is as real as it can get, guys, when it comes to site to site. And that's why I'm going to do the entire site to site VPN concept based on a VNet to a VNet connectivity. And uh, it's not very unrealistic at all because you might have two organizations who now are completely in cloud want to communicate with each other, right? They want to partner with each other, federate and do whatever they want to do. And this is how you'd be doing it. Um, if you are going to do a site to site from your on premise to cloud, you are still going to follow the same steps completely. So you're not missing out anything on this one. Okay. So these vignettes can be on the same or different regions. So, uh, this is actually almost given if you understood the previous, the previous point. Uh, these virtual networks can be anywhere. They can be on any region, any part of the world. It doesn't matter because end of the day, you're creating a tunnel between them. So they could be anywhere, wherever they want it to be. So in our subscription, we'll actually do the same. We'll make it east and west. And of course, the, since this is going to be an IPsec tunnel, what we're going to do is it's going to use a shared authentication key. So there's going to be the secret key that you're going to distribute between uh, these uh, two virtual networks. So you give the key to their admin, their admin will uh, use that same key or they'll give you the key and you guys will establish that. Um, now, the most important thing to understand for exam point of view as well is a cloud service cannot sp span a virtual network. So if you created a virtual machine, which is part of a cloud service, as you know by now, just because you have a tunnel up and running, you cannot have a virtual machine on another site who will be um, uh, part of the cloud service your virtual machine is in. I'm going to show you a little diagram in a bit uh, where we are going to actually explain this, but this is something you have to remember that your cloud service is always local. doesn't matter if you have a site-to-site -site connectivity or not. And this is there for a very good reason. So these are the task sequence. The first thing we'll do is we will actually do the planning of IP addressing. You want to absolutely know what are the IP addresses that you're going to have. Um, we are going to create the virtual networks. So I'm going to create both VNets. Um, I'm going to use the same subscription, like I said. And then I'm going to add something called as a local network, which is actually the cloud way of saying the on-premise network. I have a slide coming up on this to explain this one in more details. Then we are going to create a dynamic routing gateway and we will be creating the pre-shared key and we'll be setting that up. And then we'll be connecting these two VPN gateways to actually establish the tunnel. So this is the task sequence we are basically going to follow. So this is this is what we are going to do today. Um, so like I said, I'll mention the local network. So this is what it is. A local network in cloud terms in Microsoft Azure is synonymous to on-premise network. So let's think of this as two sites. This is my site, which is VNet East, and this is my site, which is called VNet West. 
So think of this as your on-premises network. The East is your on-premises network. And think that this is an extension of your data center to the cloud and VNet West is actually in the cloud. Okay. So when you are creating the tunnel and specifying everything in the cloud, you are going to specify your local network. You are going to say which network your other site is in. So this local network basically means your on-premises network. So on VNet West, you are going to specify a local network, which is going to be VNet East. And in VNet East, just because we have a VNet to VNet, the local network is going to be VNet West. So basically, your on-premises network is called a local network. And since over here, both are cloud, they're going to crisscross each other to be each other's local network. So VNet East's local network will be VNet West, and VNet West's local network is going to be VNet East. So we are saying this guy in the East, that your on-premises network is this guy, VNet West. And on VNet West, we are saying that your local network or your on-premises network is this one. And Microsoft could have termed this a little better, but they are assuming that whenever you're going to do a site-to-site -site tunnel, you're going to always do a tunnel between a cloud virtual network and a physical on-site on-premises network. So they are calling it local network. Uh, it's confusing. And, uh, you know, when I initially started with this, it was confusing to me as well. Like, what does this virtual network mean when it says that it wants me to specify the local network? Like, do I specify with the same VNet network address of space or what? But anytime you see the term local network, you have to think that it's the other side or the on-premise network, or in our, in, in our scenario is the other VNet. So we'll go through the demonstration of that and uh, uh, we, we are going to actually build this entire thing. So we'll see what we can do over there during uh, the demonstration for explanation. So I'm going to create um, the Ranger VM 001 in VNet East, and it's going to, I'm going to assign, or it is going to have a DIP or a dynamic IP address or the internal IP address. And Ranger VM002 will use the VNet West, and I'm going to create this, and it will have a dynamic IP address as well, the DIP. They will not be able to ping each other with their DIPs because they are two separate isolated virtual networks. So what we will do is then we are going to create the gateway and we are going to bring the tunnel up. So this will now become a site to site VPN tunnel. And then we should be able to ping each other with their uh, dynamic IPs or the private IP ranges. So we need to make sure that the VNet created over here has a completely separate address space than the VNet created over here. This is the part where we do not want them to overlap. Otherwise there are going to be issues. And the other thing we explained was that there are going to be cloud services, and that's actually a very, very confusing, uh, a very, very confusing concept. Is that when we created this virtual machine, there's going to be a cloud service. When I'm going to create this virtual machine, there's going to be a cloud service. So, which IP address do you specify on this gateway to connect? The answer to that is that you do not use any cloud or VIP addresses for your site-to-site -site tunnel. Your gateways, if you remember from your, our previous session, will have their own public IP addresses. And when you want to create the site-to-site -site tunnel, you share that public IP address. You do not share the cloud services or anything to create this gateway. The gateways use their own endpoints. They have their own uh, public IPs to bring this tunnel up. And having said that, the other concept we said we will explain was that your cloud service cannot span over here. So if you remember a few sessions ago, we, when we were talking about cloud service, we said the cloud service is essentially the container where the virtual machine or machines are located. So you could have multiple virtual machines who are part of the same cloud service. So when you create this tunnel, just because these things are local to each other or these two networks become local to each other, you will not be able to put Ranger VM002 in this cloud service, even though they're accessible to each other. There's a very good reason to do this, and it's a, it's a constraint specifically put in there to ensure that this does not happen, because you do not want your cloud service to span across regions. 
if you remember the basic concept of cloud service, the cloud service is something that's specific to a specific region. So having a uh, virtual machine here in East and a virtual machine have a, having over here in West, you cannot make them part of the same cloud service because this cloud service chances are, are only uh, associated with the East US range here. And this one only associated with the West range over here. So it's very important to know that for your exams. Okay, so let's not waste any time. Um, I think we have done enough of uh, uh, explaining and concepts over here. So we are going to get into the steps of uh, doing this in our Azure subscription. So I'll see you from there. Okay, so I am here in my client computer. And as you can see, I'm just connected to my subscription and I do not have anything in my subscription right now. So this is where you should be at this point. So the first thing we are going to do is actually create a virtual network. So you probably are very, very used to doing this by now, but you know, let's go through these steps together. So let's create a virtual network. And the first virtual network that we are going to create is going to be VNet East. I would have just named that so we, it's easy to remember. You In your production, you'd probably name it whatever you want it to be. And just because it's going to be in East, so I'm going to put East US 2 as my location. Click on Next. In previous session, when we were doing the configure, I mean, the point to site VPN, we went and checked this box over here, and it gave you some additional options when you check that box. So similarly, in the site to site VPN, you would actually click this. And as soon as you click this, you see that something like a new local network showed up over here. So if you remember our slides, the local network here means your on-premises site, right? So this is your cloud. It's using the gateway and the VPN tunnel to connect to your local network, which is synonymous to your on-premises network. In our case, this one is a virtual network or a VNet, and our local network is also going to be a virtual network. This is what I meant by saying that it's the same site-to-site -site configuration. So we are really not going to touch anything here because um, VNet to VNet or site-to-site -site is going to be the same thing. So we, we would check the same box. Having said that, this is going to be a little different because some of the information that we need are still missing. Some of you might have already guessed that, but uh, I'll just show you what I mean by saying that some of the information is missing. So configure a site-to-site -site VPN, okay, I click next. So now we are talking about the site-to-site -site connectivity. So means that here you are supposed to put your on-prem server information. So as soon as we put on-prem here, you can see it came over here, or it is your data center. So name something sensible, like I could say Toronto uh, DC data center. So basically your VNet is connecting to Toronto DC with a tunnel. This is where you would put your VPN device IP address. This is a public IP address that is actually the IP address of your VPN device on the premise on premise side, right? Because you are going to say your virtual network that, hey, you need to connect to this VPN device to bring the tunnel up. So what is the problem here? If this was a site-to-site -site connection, your data center already probably has the gateway up and running, and let that be a firewall gateway, or let that be a router, or a VPN appliance, or a VPN virtual appliance, whatever it is. It's probably already up and running, it's provisioned, and you have an IP address that's available to share to your VNet on the cloud. But do we have it? No, we don't. Because what we are doing is we are doing a virtual network to a virtual network, and we are doing the site to site between these two virtual networks. We do not even have the other virtual network over here created, let alone have its gateway. So we do not even have the VPN device IP address yet for the other side. So we can't do this at this point. So what we are going to do is that we are going to go back and we are going to say, forget doing the site-to-site -side VPN for now. Let's actually create the virtual network first. So, which is, which is what we have been doing all this time. So this is not going to be a brainer. So all we are going to do over here 
is going to go give an address space. I'm going to make sure that uh, it's an address space that's going to be uh, something unique. So I'm going to actually note that. Um, I'm going to do a 16-bit mask just for my purposes here. I'm going to leave everything else default. We know how to create a virtual network, and that's all we'll do to create this virtual network, VNet East. Now, we are also going to connect it to another virtual network. And like I said, that another virtual network could be anywhere else. It could be some other subscription. It could be some other company, other account, whatever. But for our purposes, we are going to use the same subscription because this is the most handy thing we can do. And it is, it is still following the same steps. So let's go to new network services, virtual network, uh, custom create. So we are just creating another virtual network and we are going to call this VNet West. Okay. And just because this is West, it's West US. Technically, even if it's the same subscription, just by telling this, this is going to be West USA, you are actually physically uh, on totally different space or data center when it comes to this VNets. But it's just that it's so transparent to you that you don't realize that. Uh, we are not going to do the site to site here. And this address space, like I said, you cannot overlap. So we want to make sure that these are not overlapping. So 192.168. So if this was your on-site network, you'd be putting your on-site network over here. So uh, I mean, the address is space for your on-site. So you need to make sure that when you are creating the VNet in cloud, it's different. So we are going to do this as well. So for our purposes, and I keep reiterating this just to make sure that you completely understand what we are doing here. For our purposes, we are doing these two VNets here, but these two VNets are completely physically located in two separate data centers. So it 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 properly simulates, or it properly, uh, I shouldn't use the word simulates, it properly does a site-to-site -site tunnel. Okay, so I think both our sites are done. Now, this is the same. If you are doing the VNet East, and this is the only virtual network you would have, and you want to connect to another site, you have to provide that site information, correct? So in here, you'll see a tab called local networks. This local networks is actually your on-premises networks, or with perspective of VNet East, this local network means the other site, okay? So in local networks over here, add a local network. So we would put your on-premises information here. In our case, the on-premise is what? In our case, the on-premise is the VNet West or the other site. So here, what we are going to do is we would ideally put the name of that on-premises and the VPN IP address, right? This VPN IP address was the same thing which when we were creating the VNet and we are checking the box was asking the VPN IP address of the other site. So this is some somewhere you can come and do this manually. So we will call this on-prem West. Since we are talking about East right now, the on-prem is going to be West. And like I mentioned, we do not have this gateway information yet because we have not really created the gateway. So for now, we'll just do something like this as a place holder. So this is just something random, a placeholder to just create this. And I'll show you why it's important to create this. Now it's a specifying the address space. So we know the West address space was 192.168.00 and it was 16, right? So the address space we had put for the West network was this one. So we are going to put that address space in there. Click OK. Now, that was for VNet East. And chances are, if you're doing this in production and you're not doing a VNet uh, to VNet connectivity, you are done. So you put your local networks, you put your on-premises. So we are telling VNet East, you're going to connect to your on-premises network, the other site with this public IP address over here, and you're good to go. We should have been fine. But since this is a VNet to VNet, and we are simulating this entire thing in this one subscription, we need to also specify the on-premises network for VNet West. So we go back to local network and we will add another local network, add local network, 
at this time it will be the on premises east so it's on prem east do we know the vpn gateway ip address yet no so we'll just put another placeholder do we know the ip range absolutely we know the ip range for our east which was 10 dot 1.0.0 and it was a 16 bit mask as well which is 255 255 so we'll do this and that's it so you have specified both the sites for both these vnets it, it initially seems a little confusing but you just have to remember it has to crisscross so your vnet east goes to on-prem west and your on and your vnet west goes to on-prem east to actually create that tunnel so going back to our slide we created the vnet east and we are saying that go to the on-prem to get information for the other gateway and we're telling vnet west go to the on-prem at east or just calling it on-prem but you're going to east and get this gateway information the reason we put a placeholder here called 1.1.1.1 and 2.2.2.2 is because we did not create this gateway and we do not have that IP address yet. Once we create that gateway and we get the IP address, we are going to go back and put that in. But unfortunately, when we are creating the site, it looks for the on-prem and it's one of those loops we need to get out of, so we are just doing a placeholder. So let's go back to our machine. So, so far so good. We have created the on-prem. Now let's go ahead and create the gateway for each. So let's go to VNet East. And I want to actually go to configure here. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to actually say that uh, uh, who is going to be the local network to this guy. So this is the VNet East. I want to tell this network that go connect to an on-premises network or the other site and your local network or the on-premises network or the other site, whichever terminology you want to use, is going to be on-prem west. So VNet East is connecting to on-prem west. And doing so, you can see it created a gateway. So when you uncheck this there's no gateway but just because we are saying connect to a local network which means do a site to site it's actually going and creating this gateway subnet okay so we are okay over here vnet east connecting to on-prem west let's go ahead and save that when you save that it actually starts creating up uh, I mean it creates the virtual network settings for that Let's go back now and we're going to go to vnet west and in vnet west when we go under configure we are saying that you also need to connect to another site and that's going to be on-prem east okay and it did not create the subnet but that's okay i mean it did not create the subnet for the gateway so we click on this and it will will take the default settings it will create that it will create the gateway over here gateway subnet Going to the dashboard, oops, sorry, forgot to save this. Going to the dashboard over here for VNet East. I want to show you something interesting. Look at this. So your VNet East is now trying to connect to on-prem West. So this site is trying to establish a tunnel with this site. The tunnel is not yet created or established because the gateway was not created. We just so far have provided the topology in the cloud saying that, hey, you're connecting to this guy, but we have not actually done anything to connect to this. So this VNet's gateway now needs to be created. We faked this site's gateway, right? So if you go back over here, we are faking the on-prem west gateway by 1.1.1.1 and your virtual network is thinking that okay that site is already set up but it's not 
but we are just going to do that in a bit. But for now, you need a gateway on this site to connect to your on-premises gateway. So let's go ahead and create the gateway. And here you need to choose dynamic routing because for site to site, you need dynamic routing. Click on yes. And it will try to create the gateway now for VNet East. This is similar to what we did last time when we were doing the point to site. Similarly for VNet West, we are connecting to on-prem East. We fake the site, but this side you still need the gateway and we are creating the gateway now with the dynamic routing. Okay, once these gateways are created, so the VNet East's gateway is created and VNet West's gateway is created, we are gonna come back to the local network and we are gonna change that with the VPN gateway address. So if you have already uh, like drawn this picture down, you can understand that those two public IPs for each gateways are required to set up this. This uh, gateways take some time, up to 15, 25 minutes, 15 to 25 minutes, or even more in some instances to bring this gateway. So I will pause the video, but just while this is happening, I'm going to go back over here and uh, create a new network to show the steps uh, you would be taking for the site to site on premise because now it's going to make a little bit more sense. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to custom create a network. So this would be your cloud network or cloud VNet and do whatever central US. You would actually do a configure site to site. And look, we already have a local network specified. That's why it came over here or we could have done a specified local network. So if you did not have any local network, this would what it would be. Click on next. This is where you would actually put your on-prem gateway information. You'd already know this IP address because your on-premises firewall or edge device already has that capability. So you just take that information from there. And this addressing over here would be your on-premise networks address space and which is already known. So if you are using 10.3.000 in your on-premises for your inside network, you'd actually put that over here. So just because we are doing a VNet to VNet, we did not have the gateways already created. It just the limitation of how the gateway has to be created later on. We ended up doing this. So let's cross that because we are not going to really do this. And I'm going to pause the video and come back when these both gateways are created for both ends. Okay, so the gateways have been created. So if I go to the VNet East right now, it took about like 30 minutes, by the way, for the whole thing to do. You can see that there's no error for the gateway and the gateway IP addresses have shown up. So the VNet East gateway IP is this one and VNet West, the gateway IP is going to show up momentarily here. So that was the information that was missing earlier. And, uh, this is why when we were doing the local networks, we couldn't do this. So let's take this IP addresses. So if we are going to do the VNet East first, so I need to change the VNet East local network as well with this IP address. So let's copy this. This is going to be the East one. This is going to be the gateway for the West. In your on premises, you would actually have all this information, like I mentioned before. So let's go to the local networks. So for on prem east, where we had 2222 as a placeholder, let's edit that and let's change that with 23 23.101.145.252. You want to absolutely make sure that this address is right. So it's going to cause a lot of grief later on. Okay. Prem East, everything else stays the same. Now for on-prem West, we're going to do the same thing as well. This was the placeholder, but we are going to change this with this IP address. And I just realized we can just take this and do a copy and paste. Okay. Everything is same.
Okay. So as you can see, the gateway addresses now have showed up in the local network. So before we actually go and start establishing the tunnel, I want to first create the virtual machine. So let's go to the slides over here. This is where we are. We just created the gateway and we put the gateway information uh, on the on-premises for each side, but we have not really uh, established the connection yet and we have not uh, created or assigned the pre-shared key yet. So those are the two steps we have left. Before that, I want to create these virtual machines in their respective virtual network and show you that there is no connectivity between those two. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to take too much time explaining this one because we have done this now so many times. So Ranger VM001, I will just give it seven, seven gigs, put in my username and password. And this is going to be actually the VM that's going to be associated with the VNet East. So everything over here is fine. It's going to be associated with VNet East. This is the subnet. Everything else here remains default. We go to next. Um, we are going to create the second VM, and this is going to be in VNet West. name for this VM is going to be Ranger VM002. Okay. Make it similar. Put a lot of that information. This is where we want to make sure that it's on VNet West default subnet address space. Everything else looks the same. I'll click on this. Okay, so let's pause this and uh, I'll be back when these virtual machines are up and running and I'll already be into both of them as well. Okay, so the virtual machines were created and I have RDP'd into both Ranger VM001 and Ranger VM002. Uh, Ranger VM001 belonging to the East VNet. So that's the uh, East US2 and Ranger VM002 is in the West US, okay? And they, they completely belong to uh, separate networks. So VNet East and VNet West. So these are the IP address, so these are the dips. So given the range of the East, 10.100, it went and picked up 10.104, and this one is in the West, it picked up totally different range, 192.168.0.4. So what I'm trying to demonstrate right now is that these are two separate VNet, or technically these are two separate environments. So this could be your on-premise, for example, and this is your cloud. So when you go over here and do ping 192.168.0.4, technically nothing is going to reply. And I just also want to let you know while I'm doing this is that I did enable the Windows firewall because the whole pinging doesn't work without the firewalls being disabled. So I just want to ensure that you, you actually do this well uh, before you actually uh, practice or go through this demonstration. You want to make sure the firewalls are turned off. So it's, you are not getting um, the time bars because of the firewall. Okay. So as you can see, it cannot reach this side and this side 10.1.0.4. It's not going to reach the other side as well. Okay, so what have we done so far? We created the virtual machines in the virtual networks. The virtual networks were created. We have established the lo local network. We went we went ahead and added the VPN gateways and we got the public IP addresses. And in all of these, um, when you go to configure in VNet in configure, you can actually go and see that uh, they are configured to site to site connectivity. Right? So we have done all of this as well. So there are two things that are left to be done. The first thing that's left is to, um, and, and you, you can see that it's actually trying to connect and it cannot establish the connection. It's disconnected still. And it says it's, dis, it's, its previous state was initializing, but it's not connected. And the reason it cannot connect yet is because we have not uh, created the uh, pre-shared keys that is vital for an IPsec VPN tunnel. So the way you are going to create a, a pre-shared key is um, you can come over here in VNet East and you can see that there is a manage key over here, right? So you can take this and put it in both locations in the manage key. 
and that's how you'll be sharing the key. The other thing I want to want to let you know over here, and this is more important when you are doing this with your on-premise network. So, and not only for your exams, but your on-premise network because you're extending your data center, right? There is something over here, once you create the gateway, it's called download the VPN device script. So let's click on this. What Azure has done is that when you click on this, it asks you that what is your on-premise device? So Microsoft has this list of supported and compatible edge devices that you can have on your on-premises, which can create or, or establish a tunnel with your virtual networks. And based on whichever device you have, if you come and choose, for example, um, you are doing something from Cisco and you choose the platform. So you pick like an ASA device, which is a very popular uh, uh, firewall and edge device for Cisco. And you can put the software version and you click OK. What Microsoft will do is that it will generate a script file that you can follow. So it's a configuration file, CFG. So let's actually save this and put it on the desktop so we can actually open this up and I can show you what it does. So let's take this and uh, open with, for example, Notepad. And you can see that Microsoft has created the commands and uh, the, uh, the configuration that you actually have to put in your edge device to have the tunnel up and running. So it's actually giving you all the peer addresses for the gateway. So technically you should be able to take this configuration and put it in Cisco ASA and your edge device will have the tunnel created to do this. Um, in for, for our case, that's, that's really not the scenario because we are actually doing VNet to VNet where the configuration for each other is already done. So technically all we have to do is put the shared key and uh, click on connect over here and we should be good to go. But this is a very interesting thing because uh, Microsoft are adding more and more devices. So you can actually see right now it's supporting Juniper and it's also supporting Microsoft. The reason it's supporting Microsoft because you can use RAS uh, for creating an edge device which supports VPN. And it will tell you exactly what to do once you have done that. So it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting tool to actually find that configuration. I have not yet used this tool uh, directly and applied uh, the configuration directly. But what I have done is that, um, you know, when I was uh, connecting uh, a Cisco device to um, um, to the Microsoft uh, Azure Cloud VNet, I actually took this configuration and actually tweaked through it, uh, looked through it, and, uh, you know, created the connection. So it's something you have to keep in mind when you are doing your on-premises that you can actually take Microsoft's assistance in generating the configuration on your edge device. In our case, we don't need that because we are, our both gateways are already configured uh, because Azure created them for us. So I'm going to perform the last step of creating the manage key. You could do the manage key over here, but I don't want to do it over here. I'll show you how to do that in PowerShell because this might be important for your exam. So we will be doing uh, both the gateways from here. Ideally, if it's like is on premise to cloud, you'd probably just do the one for the cloud over here. And with the configuration script, you do it on your edge device. But since both of our vignettes are in the same subscription, we are going to pass both commands over here. So the commandlet is set as your vignet gateway. Uh, it's actually gateway key. So we're creating the passphrase of the key. So this is where you put the VNet name. So the name we have for our first VNet is VNet East. So we are creating the key for VNet East. And we are telling that you are going to connect to your on-premises or to the other site or Microsoft Azure calls it local network site name. And we are going to put it on VNet West. Okay. And the shared key would be something simple, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. So this is for our gateway on the VNet East. So the VNet East, and we are saying your site is on the local network site name is VNet West with the shared key. 
Let's hit enter on that. It takes a little time to actually do that, and I think I messed up somewhere. Sorry. This is where I made the mistake. Our local network site name is actually not called VNet West. It was called oops, local networks. It was called on-prem West. It's good it happened over here. So we are saying the VNet, uh, the VNet East is connecting to the local network site name, which is on-prem west and the shared key would be 1234 ABCD. Okay. I ended up putting both VNet names over here, so which is obviously not going to work because technically VNet East does not know what VNet West is. All it knows is that the other site is called on-prem west. So it takes a little time to generate that and set that up on the gateway. Okay, so it's saying that it's successful. It said it's it set it up. We're going to do the same for the other way round, right? Because so you would be doing this on the other subscription or the other VNet on another organization, or you'd probably not do that at all because your on premises device is like an ASA from Cisco or uh, some other device. But since we are doing VNet to VNet, we are going to do this here. So it's the same command, set as your VNet gateway key. This time the VNet name is going to be VNet West and the local network site name is going to be on-prem because it's from East, from West this time. So it's going to be on-prem East and the shared key is going to be the same. So you have to have absolutely the same shared key, otherwise this is not going to work. CD. Let's hit it about that, and we are going to wait. Okay, so the other side is done as well. So if we go to VNet East right now, and we go to Manage Key, you can see that it will actually bring up the Manage Key that was there. So you can set this up here as well, but I wanted to show you how to do that in PowerShell. Okay. So let's go to our slide and see what we have done so far. So we have planned the IP addresses. We created the virtual networks on both sides. We added the local, local networks, which is the on-premise network. We created the dynamic routing gateways and we went and changed the dynamic routing gateways IP addresses because we had a placeholder. And we have set the pre-shared key. And now all that's left is to connect the VPN gateways. So the way we do that is that you come over here and each VNet and click on connect. Go to VNet West. Scroll down. Click on connect. What I have seen is that even when it says it successfully enabled the connection for, for, uh, whatever reason it might not show that it's connected right away so it might take a few minutes for the image over here to update and show it's actually connected so in this scenario you can see it shows now it's connected so the tunnel is up and running and a good reason good way to check that is that we can see some data is actually flowing between this two tunnel this tunnel over here so right now it actually came up like within a few seconds, but I have seen this take up to a couple of, um, couple of uh, minutes to show that it has been connected. But when you see this diagram right now, it means that this site has connected to this site. And this site has connected to this site, essentially uh, establishing a VPN tunnel. So the only thing left right now, since this is a site-to-site -site connection, um, means you are connected with your cloud to your on-premise and everything. The only thing left is to actually verify if that worked. So let's do an IP config here on Ranger VM002, IP config here, so we can actually get this IP addresses. 
If you recall the last time when we tried to ping each other, this did not work because obviously they are on two secluded network, two sites, uh, one is in East USA, another is in West USA, two separate data centers. So these two sites were not connected. There was no way they will access each other through the dips because you know they are not sharing the same space. But now that the tunnel is up and running, this guy is 10104. So I should be pinging the other guy, 192.168 Ranger VM002, which is in West USA. And the IP address for that is 192.168.0.4. So if everything worked out, the tunnel is up and running and everything, we should be able to ping them. And that's right, we can ping this. On this side as well, ping 10.1.0.4. Absolutely, we can ping this because we can reach each other on a separate network, separate address space, just because the tunnel has been created between these two sites. So if your Ranger VM002 was on site, on premises, and this was on the cloud, Ranger VM001, you have just extended your data center to the cloud. And this is one of the most important cloud concepts that you learn, which is extending your existing data center to the cloud. You will keep hearing that for sales page, for technical aspects, everything. And we have just accomplished that. Yes, we cheated a little bit by creating this on a little VNet, but this is something that you can do right away. You can do this on your, uh, on your subscription, trial subscription, and get this thing up and running. It is the same steps you do side to side for on-premises and on cloud. And you are capable of practicing this for your exams as well as production using the same subscription. I could very well be doing this on two separate subscriptions or you know, anything, as long as these two virtual networks have the gateway up and running. So if you go to over here, you can see that it actually has the gateway and you have done the pre-shared key and you have made sure that you have described each other's local network you are good to go. So that's all there is to site-to-site -site or VNet to VNet, um, uh, VNet to VNet connectivity. And uh, let me see. I think we covered pretty much everything. When you do this, just make sure that you do not forget to turn the firewall off. The first time I did this, uh, you know, the site was up and running, but I couldn't ping it. Just then I realized that you know the firewall was not uh, not uh, not deactivated. In your production, chances are you probably don't want to do this or you want to actually go and make the proper configuration to allow that in firewall rather than turning them off. Now, one thing came up that I want to talk to you about is that on premises, you will have a device. You'll have a Cisco device. You'll have a, um, I don't know, any, any, even Microsoft Otter AS or whatever to create your VPN, the edge device. You do not need an edge device in your as your subscription. So do not think that you have to go over here and create an appliance or uh, create a virtual machine and enable our AS to create a tunnel or anything. As long as you have the gateway, the gateway is the appliance or the gateway is the edge device that you need. So to make things very simple, Microsoft actually provides you this. So this actually creates web roles in the back end, and Microsoft spins a bunch of stuff to make sure that you actually have a gateway. It's not as simple as this. That's why when you create the gateway, it takes so much time because it's doing a lot of things at the back end to ensure that you actually have a, an edge device attached to your VNet. So you do not need any uh, virtual appliance or anything to create this tunnel. It's provided to you as long as you have this gateway, okay? And uh, that's one important thing. Of course, for your on-premises, you could have a virtual appliance or you could have Microsoft Outer AS, you could have uh, a Cisco, um, I don't know, Netgear or Linksys, whatever, can create an IPsec tunnel. So it should be able to do the IKE protocols and everything, so you'll be okay. So that's all there is to it. So let's go back to our slides. This is a link I want you to visit. It's the VPN devices for virtual network connectivity. So Microsoft has this entire list of all the virtual appliances or um, not virtual appliances, just gateway devices like router, Cisco, um, F5 or you know Citrix and 
all these devices that Microsoft supports. So it's a very interesting place to actually make sure that you have a device which supports the tunnel, creating the tunnel, side-to-side -side tunnel with the VNet, or if you're planning to purchase one, this is where you should be really going to ensure you have the right device to do that. Uh, chances are your current edge device already supports this. And even if it's not on the list, so once I tried to do this in my home lab, so I was trying to extend my home lab to the cloud and I have a uh, Linksys device uh, which supports IPsec VPN. And I was able to use the configuration downloaded from Microsoft site and just put in that information and do the pre-shared key and I was good to go. Okay, so it's a very important site for your production to refer before you go and invest in a device. All right, so that concludes our site-to-site -site or VNet to VNet connectivity. As usual, our training site is at cloudranger.net forward slash Azure training. YouTube is at Cloud Ranger Network. Uh, Twitter at Cloud Ranger blog. Email at Sean at cloudranger.net. Uh, please go ahead and ask your questions on YouTube uh, videos comment section or by blog comment section. Uh, that's the easiest place to uh, reply to your questions, keeping in mind that other people may have the same questions and uh, and they will benefit from um, the com your comment being there. Uh, do not forget to like the videos. It works as an encouragement. And for anything else, and even if you have questions, I will try to reply uh, if you email me at sean at cloudranger.net, but obviously uh, time permitting, it might take some time to get back to you. Um, I try to respond to most emails that are sent to me. So, um, but like, like I mentioned, it's better if you have questions to ask on the comment sections for both blog and the YouTube video. All right, so that's it for this session. Thank you for viewing and I'll be seeing you in the next session.